we all know, you know, your payroll is by far your most expensive uh, expense that you have. And the more you're able to leverage that better, the more profitability it's going to turn into on the bottom line. So, all right, I'm done off my soapbox on that one. This is the PMP Industry Insider Podcast. Hello and welcome out to another episode of the PMP Industry Insider Podcast, where we take a look at what is changing in the pest and lawn industries. And we take you to the front lines of those that are driving those changes. As always, I'm Donnie Shelton, owner of Triangle Home Services, which has Triangle Pest as well as Triangle Lawn, my two favorite companies I may have. And with me is the uh, Evergreen. Is that Evergreen? Is that, is that a personality? Evergreen. Ever, Evergreen, Dan Gordon. Dan, we spent a lot of time together last week. So go ahead and introduce yourself, our sponsors. Our amazing, amazing uh, guest today, and then we'll jump right into this. I'm excited about today's. All right, let's do it. So, uh, Dan Gordon, PCO Bookkeepers, MA Specialists, Accounting and Exit Planning Services for the pest control industry. And uh, so, let's see, uh, our sponsors today are Cole March by Workwave. If you need uh, digital, uh, or actually all marketing, I was corrected a few weeks back, uh, contact them. It's colemarch.com. And uh, PestSure, if you need general liability, auto, uh, workers' comp, and the like, uh, that's PestSure.com. And uh, we are back from the uh, uh, Workwave conference, which was outstanding. We'll talk about that in a few. But um, let's talk about something that we all love, our guests. Our guests today are Donnie <laughs> and I, because we're going to do a and d session, and it's going to be a review of um, last year, what we saw, what, the good, the bad, the ugly. Hang and on, hang on. And, and some circles, D&D is like Dungeons and Dragons. We, we are not going there. In case you say, to I had no idea. <laughs> I, like, you know, here I am. I'm not, I'm I'm not whipping out some game pieces and we're not going to. Yeah, no, no, no. That's your, no, uh, yeah. listen, I don't know what websites you're on, but uh, <laughs> but here's the deal. So uh, remember when I had Poison Ivy and these guys made fun of me and whatnot. So Donnie came back with what I believe is covid <laughs> Oh. He hasn't tested by the afternoon. No, I have not tested yet. Know that he'll, he'll, uh, that's the beauty of this podcast. The show must go on the because show. we're in separate places. So, yes, the show must so uh, he's, you can't a, he's tell a by my voice. I was going to say, if you can't tell by my voice, I just feel divine. We'll just say that. I feel divine. Well, it, yeah, yes. listen, you are, you know, a trooper. So yeah. Uh, yeah. anyway, let's get to it and uh if you um faint or anything i'll you know keep it going until you wake up and uh well, well we got one out. more thing before we jump into it which is um, oh, what did I and forget? just a re- just a reminder for our listeners um and and if you went to the workwave conference i think dan did a fantastic presentation on this which is uh, you know, if you're not a part of a, of a peer group, certainly we offer them um, as part of our podcast. You can join one of our um, one of our peer groups. We have several. If if that's not your thing, if if you don't want to join one of ours, I don't. I would just highly recommend that you do join one in general. It doesn't have to be ours. But if you're interested, we are uh, working with David Billingsley. He has a ton of experience. The thing I like about David is he has a lot of experience in smaller companies as well as large companies. And you can go to episode 136 or visit pmpindustryinsider.com. Take a look at peer groups. So it's forward slash peer groups if you want to learn all about that. And yes, Dan, you're correct. We're talking about 2023. I would, before before we do that, I yep. am sitting here recording this knowing that tomorrow is one of our peer groups. So David and I will be hosting that peer group and uh, um, yep. we'll uh, be, be doing that. So uh you know, we've, it's kind of blown up. Uh, we put together, I don't know, there's probably like 50 people already who are, have joined. Yeah. So, um, no, it's great. We're, uh, we're in pretty good shape. So anyway, yeah, let's talk about 2023 and, uh, well, a few disclaimers. Like be, yeah, yeah. I want to start ahead. with disclaimers. So, so the first disclaimer is, um, I always cringe about doing an episode on what has happened in the past because it's almost like who cares. But I do think it's important that we we look at 2023 because a lot of things that happened in 23 are going to continue into 2024. And it's, I think it's good to get a, a, a recap so that as you're thinking about how you're going to, you know, how you're going to operate your business in 2024, looking at some of the trends that are, that are emerging out of that. I think I just think it's really important to look at where are things going uh, or where things have been so that you can figure out where things are going. So that's the first disclaimer. The second disclaimer I will say is that and it's going back to peer groups, which is if you truly want to get better, 
you know, a lot of people talk about wanting to get better. And a lot of people talk about, yeah, I want to grow my business. Well, that's where, you know, peer groups is a great place to do that. You don't have to do that, but you know, it's, it's nice when you have kind of a board of directors, people who are kind of sitting in the seat and who, who you don't pay and who will give you unfiltered feedback if you are doing well, or if you're screwing up, I just, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of it. Nan knows that. And I've been a member of a peer group for, for over a decade. Bonnie's really good about the unfiltered uh, comments. So. <laughs> well, I get it from time to time too. So, there so have let's been get into tears. There have been tears in our peer group. There have been. Don- that's true. Due to Donnie's subtle. Uh, well, I've gotten comments. better. Yeah. I definitely don't do what I used to do. I'm, as I've gotten, as I've gotten older, I've, I've, I've mellowed out quite a bit. So, okay. Yeah, so. So let's talk about 2023. And I think the first thing to talk about is obviously the PEST index, because that's a nice barometer of the industry in general. And so, Dan, I'm going to let you talk a little bit about first revenue, uh, and then let's get into just some basic trends that you're seeing on most P&Ls. I, I mean, obviously, you have a very unique position where you can you can see this kind of data and, and scrub it out and look at and make kind of general industry um forecast and general industry uh, analysis. And so let's let's talk about it. Let's get to it. Let's talk about revenue growth first. Take it on. So revenue growth. Uh, so we just published the uh, November index. Uh, December usually comes out. It usually comes out like the 22nd to the 25th of the month following. So we issued the November and basically the PEST index uh, shows that we're, you know, as an industry at about 10 percent. Uh, as I've said in the past, that tracks really, really well with uh, Rollins and uh, based on their in- earnings call. But uh, actually, Rollins is. It, it's usually a lot less than the pest index, but if you look at their earnings calls uh, or their last one anyway, uh, their growth is actually double digits. Now think about how amazing that is for a company that size. And, and there is a bunch of M&A in that. Right. So, you know, you got to strip that out. But but at the end of the day, we grew 10%. Is that a good thing? Well, basically we kept pace with uh, inflation, our customer counts. We didn't see any magic there. They're flat to up a little bit, but there, there's nothing, no great shakes. Most of that 10% is price increases. And I think that we, we've we talked about that uh, in in past. Um, what I thought was really interesting is that gross profits, um, gross profits uh, were between that 50 and 55. Ours were probably like 52 and a half, 53. And the Rollins report, theirs was 53.8. Now, if you look at the chart of accounts that we use across our clients, it's very close to Rollins. So if you're using a different chart of account, if you're an accountant, you know, well, if you're using an accounting firm besides us, you should come to us. But if you're using another accounting firm, uh, you know, and the chart of accounts is different, you may come up with a, uh, a different uh, conclusion. Um, the yeah, uh, comparisons only work if you're if you have the same chart of accounts. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. The the other thing which is kind of interesting is um, the um, so so pricing is outpacing inflation by a half a percent, uh, fifty bips, right? And um, so that's not the ten percent. So most of that ten percent is pricing. Um, one of the things that was also brought out and, and I looked at the Rollins earning call just because a lot of the stuff that we see, they see totally, I mean, and, and they get it. And one of the things like we had Todd Burke or uh, Burke on, uh, last week or two weeks ago, talking about the auto, um, insurance, um, you know, where, where that is state of the market. And, uh, uh, Rollins folks had some, some, some issues with that in the past, but they said that it's starting to, um, you know, it's, it's starting to, uh, uh, come back the other way, a little favorable. Uh, the other thing that I'm, I'm, I'm extremely proud of with the Rollins call is the whole call was pretty much about an acquisition of our friends, Mike and Brian from oh, Fox, yeah. the, the yeah. Fox deal added uh, 30 basis points to gross profit. That is accretive. And um, so uh, that took us about a year and a half to get that deal done. Uh, you have to have a real understanding of door to door, not just a bunch of, you know, and there, there's a lot of information or disinformation about or with door to door folks, uh, but you really have to do it. We we crunched some numbers and modeled that out. Um, well, can so, we can we so, just spend a little bit of time on that because I think it, this it acquisition in general, it, it it makes a big statement. You know, mainly because it's a major making a 
major investment in door to door, meaning that, you know, I, you know, door to door has always been kind of the, the summer girlfriend, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. I was going to say the redheaded stepchild, but no, the summer girlfriend. No, the summer like girlfriend, it. where everyone wants to do it because it gets quick sales. But obviously, there's a lot that goes with it, which is you know, you know, damage in your brand. There's attrition that goes with it. Like no one has really, really been able to crack that nut of we're going to do door to door. We're going to put on accounts really, really fast, and we're going to do it in a way that you know makes sense to the overall business model. And and I will tell you, and and by the way, I'm not, I have no affiliation with Rollins whatsoever, but I am absolutely a Rollins fan. I think they're a very disciplined company. And so, so the fact that Rollins, who I consider to be a very conservative and disciplined company, bid off on an acquisition like this says a lot about where this industry is going. And it says a lot about um, how Fox was able to, to really work on the the black eyes of of, of, of traditional door companies, which is you know when you look at like the ability to to grow like another another marketing engine as well as retention, which was another big deal, and and Fox was great at that. And so, to me, that acquisition was a was a knockout for everyone involved. But 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 for me, I'm more like looking at it like, hmm, this is real. It's here to stay. And and when you have a major like. Rollins, who's a very disciplined company making a bid in this, that, that says a lot, but that that's, I just, I think it's important to make that point. No, it's, it's very interesting because, um, you know, the, um, it, it kind of healed some of the black eye that was on the, the door-to-door industry back in 2016, I think, uh, or 15 with the Altera deal, that thing fell apart and door-to-door yeah. really got a black eye and never really recovered. And now, uh, well, there was a blood Fox in deal. That. <laughs> yeah. Well, now with the Fox deals and some of the other deals we're working on, and, and um, that black eye is slowly getting healed. That doesn't mean that you know door to door is like anything else. It's the general population. You've got good companies and bad mm-hmm. companies, right? Right. And the good companies, the guys who learn not just about sales, because most door to door companies are pretty good at sales, but how to operate and how to operate. You know, it's interesting with door to door. There's there's a KPI with door to door that you don't see with other, uh, you know, with other more traditional companies. And that is sales to service. In other words, <laughs> not every sale gets service because it's happening so quick, right? So mm-hmm. if you've got a, you know, a million, $2 million branch, you bring in a door team and they're putting on 15 or 20 stops or, or starts in a day, there's a trick to getting that done. And so, you know, that's, that's uh, one of those things that uh, is, is uh, really interesting. And it's, a, and it's a tribute to the Fox, uh, their, their entire leadership team was, was incredible. And then mm-hmm. uh, Rollins recognizing that and, and, and putting in a, a real competitive bid. So that's great. Um, yeah. What else? Uh, sales uh, and general administrative. Um this was um, right out of the Rollins report. Benefits from leverage on people costs and improve auto claim experience more than offset headwinds from increasing advertising and selling expense. In other words, everybody is recognizing that selling and marketing is becoming more expensive. Mm-hmm. But in order to hold the margins, you've got to find it somewhere else. So in, in their case, right. they found it in better uh, auto claims. But, um, you know... We had Rachel on, oh, how long ago was that? A couple of months ago. And uh, she basically said, look, uh, the, 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 you know, the party is over and now you got to work hard. It, it just reminds me of the Yellow Pages days, you know, where right. it was, you know, just the wow, wow west. And then all of a sudden it dried up. And I think that that's some of what's going on now. What do you think? Well, the other thing that they say in that one sentence, which is benefits from from leverage on people cost. You know, when you when you dig into that a little bit, and, and I will tell you how I read this, and 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 I'm kind of doing this from my own experience. I don't work at Rollins, obviously. I don't have, I don't have any kind of insider knowledge of what goes on behind the curtain at Rollins. We'll call but, you when they're making a massive decision. Yeah, they don't. They employee. don't consult me, unfortunately. But but you know, one of the things that we were able to do at Triangle has really been in in the sense of how we've been able to leverage software. And that doesn't mean that we lay people off, but what that does mean is that we, we repurpose them. You know, I mean, obviously, I mean, everyone knows that I run Pest Pack. I use WorkWave, I use Full March, I use Pest Sure, the, the, you know, the, the vendors that, we, that sponsor the show, I use them at Triangle. 
And, you know, route op, for example, I mean, that freed up one person for scheduling. You know, we have three different markets. We got, you know, what I would consider to be five major service lines and route up kind of changed the game with that. And so, so my point here is, is that, you know, if you're listening to this and like, what's the takeaway here, if you're not looking at ways to eliminate jobs, I mean, software and technology is moving pretty quickly. I would, I would also caution because, you know, you can, like most things, you can go too far. There are some people who are so interested in software, they stop running their business and they stop doing the basics. I would not do that. But, and, and, if you're on YouTube, you'll see Dan shaking his head because we are both thinking of a particular client right now we had back in the day who spent all of his time on software and no time running his business. But at the same time, you know, it, it is absolutely worth, you know, you should be out, you should be going to conferences, you should be looking for ways because we all know, you know, your payroll is by far your most expensive uh, expense that you have. And the more you're able to leverage that better, the more profitability it's going to turn into on the bottom line. So, all right, I'm done off my soapbox on that one. Well, I mean, uh, uh, that route up, to, the, just the work wave, uh, the opening um, the uh, opening comments by Dave Gianetto and then uh, the uh, COO, and uh, and they had a, an entertainer guy there uh, who uh, warmed up the audience. <laughs> and for whatever reason, there were more than a thousand people out there. This guy pulled up Donnie and yes. called him Ronnie. Oh. And uh, so, um, yes. I, I, yeah, so he was abusing Ronnie. Um, and, oh, uh, believe me, anyway, I, I sat down and my watch, I mean, legitimately, like, bing, 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 all of them. Hey, Ronnie, 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 Ronnie. So I just changed my name badge to say Ronnie <laughs> instead of Donnie. And uh, unfortunately, so, that, that name badge got spiked at lunch. <laughs> so I had to get a new ah, one. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. Anyway, uh, but but their uh, but but the opening um, uh, talk, which was kind of you know a, a peek into the future, was absolutely amazing. What they're doing with AI, and it's not going to happen today or tomorrow or even probably next year. You're talking five years out. Some of the things that they're doing with AI and routing and customer service, yeah. it is amazing. Absolutely yep. amazing. Very, very yep. cool. So pretty excited yep. about that stuff. Um, yep. Um, all right. So accounting revenues are up. Customer accounts are flat to slightly up. Gross margins are up. Selling and marketing costs up. My cost per sale, cost per lead up. Um, here's uh, accounting Um Here's one that um, kind of started with uh, COVID and uh, has most states have adopted it. If you're not taking uh, advantage of the pass through entity tax, PTE, you need to be doing that. That's yeah. uh, one of the things all of our clients are taking advantage of. We're taking advantage as an accounting firm and, and, and whatnot. Um, if you don't know what it is, contact us. Um, you need to have a smart tax guy on your side, not just uh, somebody who does preparation, but somebody who understands the planning. And the Section 199A deduction for uh, entity pass-throughs, that's one that uh, calculation has to be right. It allows you to exclude 20% of your pass-through income or 20% of the profit from your company. If you don't know about that, give us a call or do some research on your own. Another one that came out toward the end of the year, and you know, uh, Donnie's a bit of a softy and kind of a lefty, so I don't know if he's going to oh, yeah. um, appreciate yeah. this. Oh yeah. So, so there, th this is like government oversight at its worst. It's called the beneficial ownership reporting, mm -hmm. and basically, uh, 2024 is, is when it's uh, you need to to. Um, report uh the it came out at the end of 2023 um it's a reporting uh it's it you, and any company that was created or registered to do business before january 1st 2024 will have until january 2025 to file its initial benefit ownership information the reason that it's important it's not like the census where you just blow it off the fine for not Completing it is $10,000 per incident. It could be very, very expensive. So if you're not, if you don't know about beneficial ownership reporting, and a lot of accountants or accounting firms are punting to law firms, we're uh, dabbling in it. We'll probably be doing it for our clients or, or providing a service because every time there's a change, you have to refile. It's, it's government 
oversight at its worst. Uh, I was going to say, to say it's frustrating. If you go to the website, it's fin c e n so f i n c e n dot gov b o i slash b o i. It when you read this beneficial ownership page, if it doesn't make you just crazy, it should. It's ridiculous. So um, I am not a fan of it. And uh, yes, that said, you will comply, uh, or you will, will be comply. Paying money. Yeah, and it's very much like you will be fined and blah blah blah. And yeah. Oh yeah. gosh. Anyway, yeah, but, so you know, if you a guy don't, like yeah. you, it's probably a tank of gas in your airplane. Give me a break. So it's probably no, not. It's not. I will tell you this: <laughs> if you don't know what it is, go to the website, get yourself informed, and talk with your accountant. Make sure yeah. that you understand what it is because it, it could absolutely come back and bite you. Now. One thing you didn't put on here that I'm really surprised by yeah. is the employee retention credit and what happened this year in the ah. program. Yeah, well, he's showing the, yeah. I mean, what happened? Because, you know, they shut the program down because there was so much fraud. And, you know, I will say it, Dan's sitting there getting red, and but I will say it. We talked about this in several episodes back and we were both like, mm, stay with it. Now, that doesn't mean if you did it, that it's bad. And it doesn't mean if you, you, I mean, look, I'm not passing judgment either way, but I will say this. If I was sitting on one of those credits right now, I would be, I would be making sure that everything is tight and and good because it, it has become an area of focus. So I'm surprised it's not on here. It's a huge area of focus. We did not do it. Any, you know, our clients came to us and asked us to do it. The, the thing what's was really interesting about it is in order to to apply for it basically what you're doing is you're amending your payroll tax return mm -hmm. and you know let's say you're a company with 20 20 people right to amend that tax return might take a preparer who knows what he's doing 2 hours 3 hours and what these companies are doing is taking 20% like as a commission by the way the it it the the amount of money was you know uh, well over if if you qualified for the whole period it was well over twenty thousand dollars employee so mm -hmm. you know there are companies in our industry who are eligible for millions right right when I say eligible I'm not quite sure that they were eligible because if their revenue didn't shrink then there's another uh, test where if the government uh, did something to affect your ability to do business, right? So like in my home state of New Jersey, um, the governor was really pretty uh, um, proactive <laughs> when COVID came out. Remember, he he uh, said everybody has to stay in their house, everybody wears a mask and everybody can't come out and, and you can't oh, yeah. have meetings and you can't go to the office. And there's a series of executive orders in New Jersey that I believe, I don't know whether those executive orders will pass mustard in an audit, but it certainly will take away the fraud element because mm -hmm. a lot of this is fraud and people will go to jail over this. They, they absolutely right. will, right? right? So if you got one, I would put the money in a in a in an interest bearing account and just hold on to it. Um, I believe that the statute of limitations, which is normally three years, is five years. I would put it in an account because you may be called on or you may be audited. Not saying that you can't come through with the audit, but look at your executive orders from the governors of the states that you're in. I would tell you my home state of New Jersey, you've got a bunch of executive orders. My new home state of Florida, I'm going to say that they basically ignored the whole thing. And so you're probably, you know, if your revenues didn't drop, there's not a lot of executive orders that you can, um, you know, rest your laurels on. So, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's the reason I didn't address it is because we, I, I didn't, you know, so many people asked me to do it. And by the way, like I said, so if I charge $500 an hour to, to be a tax consultant, my fee should be $1,500 to 2000. You've got, well, some of our clients paid these 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 knucklehead companies twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars to do this, and it'll be a problem when you know when the when the when 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 the audits start. Well, let's let's uh, let's get into. I, I just bring that up because I was pretty surprised you didn't put it on the outline, so I figured I'd just have a little fun and watch you. Yeah, no, I didn't put it on just because it's not <laughs> something that I want to. You know, it, it's it's something that I. I so there you that. go. There you go, our listeners. We had yeah. fun. 
Yes. Okay. So let's continue on. So let's talk a little bit about marketing in 2023, because as Rachel said, it was a challenging year. And I want to, I want to kind of pitch that in different, two different ways. Number one is that it was a big year in marketing. And, and what I mean by a big year, it was a ton. And I do mean a ton of change. Chat GPT came online November of 2022. Dan and I talked about it way back in the day before it got to be this huge thing. And now it has blown up. And, and I will tell you, if there's one thing that's going to completely change the marketing landscape, it's absolutely going to be generative AI. If you've not taken the time as a business owner to learn how AI works, I'm not telling you need to be an expert at AI, but there's tons of videos online. There's tons of things on YouTube. You really need to understand fundamentally how it works. I mean, it's nothing more than statistics and machine learning and, and stringing words and letters and phrases together. And what that's turned into is pretty much a completely personalized and creative marketing experience by the user. It has taken marketing to an entirely different level. And it's also taken content generation to an entirely different level. I was in a conference in November where a guy fed a GPT, a marketing book, and trained it on that book and then said, okay, now create me a website based on the principles in this book. And it was freaking amazing. It did. <laughs> it did that. And so all I'm saying is, is that on the marketing front, I, I, I'm talking a little bit about AI and, and mainly because Dan knows this is something, this is a topic that I find very fascinating. I think it's probably one of the biggest um, technological advancements we have seen in a really long time in technology in general. Not that it hasn't been around, but just that we, the fact that we have the computing power now to make it do useful things. And so I just believe, you know, in 2023, generative AI, and what I mean by generative AI is artificial intelligence that can generate content, that can generate ads, it can generate you know, any kind of, basically any kind of content you can think of, it can do that on its own based on training. And, you know, another thing I would, another thing I would say with marketing is, is that we don't know where this is going. You know, Google really, much like Google just ran circles around Microsoft. Remember when, remember when the internet was coming on board and Google just killed Microsoft in that space? You know, Microsoft survived. Well, now Microsoft really upended Apple and Google in this space, not that they didn't have AI engines before, but they were not very good or they would get, you know, they would, they would release them and then they'd become jaded and they'd become racist and a bunch of other stuff and they'd have to turn them off. With OpenAI, when Microsoft bought them, and I remember saying this on this podcast, they bought them for 13 billion. I'm like, that's the best acquisition they've ever done. And it's already proving to be that. And so, so having said all of that, you know, now, you know, when, when chat GPT first came out, it was not connected to the internet. Now it is. And what's the back end of that? Do you know, Dan, when it connects to the internet, do you know what it uses? Oops. Bing. <laughs> Bing. Really? Yeah. Well, so, uh... And I'm bringing this up because listen, we have all gotten away with ignoring. I mean, Google has been the big fat gorilla in marketing, digital marketing for a really, really long time. The question that is really out there, and I don't think anyone knows yet, of course, now Google is doing generative AI on their platform and they are leveraging the same thing and their AI is getting a lot better. But the question becomes, are people going to change how they get information? Are they going well, to I go to AI? And if they do, if they do, you damn well better start paying attention to being. I was, I was, uh, you know, I write articles and whatnot and I was using ChatGPT. I have switched over to Google Bard. Bard, I don't even look at ChatGPT anymore. Uh, the Bard, it, it was really interesting. The other day I was writing an article on chart of accounts and all things. Like we had a client who uh, his accountant said that our chart of accounts needed updating and that it needed work, which he's not an industry participant and he really doesn't, um, you know, understand the whole break-even analysis methodology that we use. But but I asked Bard, I said, um, I would like you to write a, a checklist of questions that you should ask in formulating a pest control chart of accounts. And Bard wrote me this checklist that was spot on and then gave me references. The references were the AICPA, which is the, the mm -hmm. American Institute of CPAs. It was QuickBooks, uh, you know, their uh, uh, information or help, yeah. yeah, that kind yeah. of thing. And uh, it was um, uh, NetSuite, which is another uh, uh, accounting software. And this 
checklist was so spot on that that would have taken me hours and hours to do right. um right. you know and and who it, knows what be I would ask all the because you know did you see where the new york times filed suit against chat gpt yeah. because they yeah, were, yeah. and and it's impossible for any of these gpts to train themselves or to to ha- be completely useful at all without using copyrighted works. And that's absolutely what they did. I mean, they used all kinds of copyrighted works to train these GPTs. And so oh, it's gonna be really you, interesting. You've got every newspaper, every news outlet, yeah. every, and it's all cops. So does that end in yeah. AI? I don't think Who knows? so, but, but, Who knows? but the, the, the New York Times thing is, is very, very interesting. It's going to be, I guess my point is, is, you know, 2023 was the breakout year for AI across multiple, I mean, you you look at marketing, given the personalized experience, you look at like content generation. I mean, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the newspapers now are using AI to generate articles. And so it's really become mainstream, which I know our listeners, that's not surprising anyone, but I think what's going to be interesting is how it gets leveraged in marketing going forward and really what's going to happen in search. And I think as a business owner, we really need to be paying attention to this because if it turns out that chat GPT starts supplanting Google as a default for search, well, now we got to start really paying attention to Bing. We really got to start paying attention to Microsoft because Microsoft's going to own that space and they're going to be the next piece. You know, Google has a very strong algorithm, but the fact is, I mean, you have to admit it is way easier to talk to ChatGPT and get what you want and a lot faster and a lot more useful than it is going through links, scrolling through pages, trying to pick out what exactly like and making sure that like it just, I'm telling you, and Bard is good, you, right? But yeah. no, no, but you told me something a couple of months ago about how Bard is built into your Google search. And I didn't yeah. do anything, but it got in mind every time I do a Google they, they search. They were listening. Bard, yeah, they probably were, right? But uh-huh. Bard uh, gives me exactly what I want every time I do a Google search. It is so cool. So I don't yeah. know how to hook it up, but if you, you know. Well, I mean, I think it, as far as our listeners, things that you can leverage this year, number one, absolutely content generation. You should not be sending out a piece of marketing from your office that doesn't have at least been filtered through AI. There's also ways that you can plug in AI bots that can give a completely unique and personalized message to your customers. Um, Dan is right. They did a, some pretty cool demos at the WorkWave conference of how AI is being leveraged to do customer service, how it's being leveraged to do routing, how things are changing, and, and AI is able to reroute based on that. Um, it's still a good ways out, but but for like now, 2024, I think the big piece, the big opportunity here is going to be marketing, and it's also going to be making sure that you stay in touch with what's happening in that industry because, number one, your best source of information right now for AI is YouTube. It's not a book. You know, I mean, like legitimately, like, I mean, all the breaking information right now is happening on YouTube. And then the second piece is, I don't know if you saw this, but ChatGPT released a GPT store now. So you can go and buy and purchase GPTs that are specialized that people have built. It is the coolest thing. If you've not done that, go to GPT4 oh, wow. and and there's, it's almost like it's an app store, but for GPTs and generative AI. And so if you haven't done that, pay the 20 bucks. Go to Chat GPT. Take a look at their store. There's several GPTs in there. There's website builders in there. There's content generators in there. There's data analyzers in there. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. And you know, on the previous episode, I showed where we trained a GPT for Triangle and for our in-office uh, documentation. And you know, we we're not fully online with that yet. We're still training it. But that's where this is going. And so, very 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 exciting and has the potential has the potential to really transform not only marketing, but also our customer experience. And so, so very exciting there. I I get really excited when I start talking about AI. How about that, that, that uh, GPT store? Like uh, I could see a lot of entertainment, like, uh, you know, sports buffs and things like that. It's crazy. Gambling, like, uh, you know, handicapping games and things. You know, what's funny is they just released a, a news press that said that there will be no political GPTs allowed in the store. So you can't use a GPT yeah, yeah. to spread misinformation or to gin up votes and those types of things. So they have turned it off. But if you go to chat.openai.com, there's a little link on the left that says explore GPTs. And there's all kinds of stuff on there. There's trail finders, there's code tutors, there's books, there's PDF. I mean, you name it, it's, it's, it, it can do research for you. And one of the ones I really like is a, is a GPT called Consensus, where you can come up with a point and it'll search academic papers and it'll search science-based answers and give you all the references. So you know how it is, man. 
I mean, science is like statistics. You can pretty much manipulate it to say whatever it is that you want to. Now AI makes that easy. <laughs> so Good. something something pretty exciting. I would definitely go and take a look at that. And of course, there's, you know, Dolly, there's these, you know, image generators, there's, you know, these writing coaches. I mean, just just a ton of stuff. And so, all right, I'm done talking about AI. I get super excited when I talk about it. We're going to have to move on. This all right, Dan. Guy who has here. COVID. I mean, look, I know. look at how excited he gets. He's, I know. He's probably <laughs> broken out of it. So uh, we have a couple of other things. Uh, the uh, insurance, uh, you know, what what are we seeing? Auto insurance up slightly. Rollins said that there was down slightly. I know that they had a blip. Health insurance, that's up slightly or more than slightly, depending on who you are, what state you're in, what uh, how you buy your insurance. Um, merger and acquisitions, it's kind of interesting. So mm -hmm. what I've noticed is that a lot of the um, acquisitions – uh, especially done by the brokers, uh, the the uh, buyers are asking the brokers not to publish for quite a while because they want it, a lot of these PE firms. Um, some brokers are doing it anyway, and so that doesn't bode well. But um, quietly, you know, we we kind of comply with what people ask us. We did fourteen deals in two thousand twenty three. Two of them featured on the earnings calls and Bloomberg Wire. The first was Rollins and. Uh, Fox, we spoke about that. The second was RK Environmental at uh, Renekill. That also made the news wires and, and uh, uh, made their uh, earnings call. So, um, you know, there's really no uh, repository to tell all the deals that happen because they're private. I believe that we've we over $600 million worth of deals last year. So M&A is alive and well. Uh, even though you might not see as many of, you know, when you, you get that, uh, that, that uh, email newsletter from the magazines, you know, a lot of the deals don't get announced anymore. So the other thing that we're watching is a shift to private equity, right? Uh -huh. So they, yeah. the, uh, you know, the, 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 the strategics, they're still buying, they're, they're, they're doing great, you know, they're, but um, the, the private equity guys are, it's the next phase. They're the guys who are driving up all the valuations. But again, a lot of that has to do with rolling equity as well. So you got to look at that. Uh, let's see. Looking to 2024, um, I would reference anybody who went to that WorkWave com conference, that first uh you know, introduction and and what their vision was. It was just a uh, what's happening in this industry from every perspective. It's you know the, the industry used to be this blue collar go and uh, you know kill bugs, and now it's uh, it's it, it's getting high tech, as I would imagine with most all other industries as well. But uh, very very impressed with the with where we're going. Well, you know, it's it's I think you know. David mentioned it, you know, he, you know, at some point you have to get in order to, for the software to keep up with what's happening in the industry, you have to go bigger and you have to get out international and you have to create a larger footprint because there's just not enough cash to keep up with what's going on. And so I think their direction, I really like And And by the way, I mean, obviously WorkWave sponsors a spot podcast, but if there was another software provider, I, I mean, we all know that uh, routes got purchased by, um, Service type. Service so I, I think that, I think it's that that's kind of their same vision. I, although I can't talk to them, but but with that, we're going to have to finish out. And I got one more thing before we go. As we were talking, I did a little research, Dan, and I found. Look at you, GPTs. a multitasker. No, no, I found two GPTs that I think you're really going to like, and we should probably link them on the show notes page. The first is what's called Tattoo GPT. <laughs> Yes. Tattoo GPT designs your tattoo. It assists you in refining your tattoo ideas. It is by uh -huh. Michael Makata. Makata, that's what it is. So we'll, we'll put that up. And the last one, which I know you well, Wait, well, how did you find that? Was that like a suggested? Uh, no, it's in, it's, know, in this, for... it's on these Explore GPTs. It's in this GPT store. And so the well, second were you one. you thinking of getting a tattoo or how did that come about? Or, no, or you know? no, I didn't. I don't oh, know okay. why that came up, but I, I would okay. never get a tattoo. Uh, at least knowingly. Yeah, the second yeah. one, which I know you you probably already have those one, is D N D G P T, your Dungeons and Dragons companion, for creative <laughs> storytelling yeah. and rule guidance. And with that, folks, you managed to spend another forty minutes with Dan and I 
pontificating on what you're going to see in 2024 as well as wrapping up 2023. As always, we appreciate any ratings and reviews that you have for the show. We very much enjoy doing it. We'll make sure that uh, if you just go to pmpindustryinsider.com, just take a look under show notes. We'll link up these GPTs, especially if you're into D&D and if you want a nice new tattoo, we'll do that as well. As always, we love five star reviews, but if you do have questions, comments, or especially complaints, we ask that you direct those with Dan. And with that, we're going to sign out. We'll um, see you Wait, wait, time. wait. Uh, yeah. Everyone should send Donnie a get well soon oh, email gosh. or e yes. card. And, uh, yeah, I'm going okay. to sleep after this. So, all right. All right. We'll, well see I ya. appreciate you coming on. Take care. <laughs> see ya. Yeah, take care. Bye, Bye now.